There we have it. Mario's running around. Luigi's running around. The multiplayer Super Mario 64 running on the Xbox Series S and X. Welcome back to Twin Chips Studio, and today we're going to be looking at Dolphin Emulator on Xbox Series S and X. I'm going to show you a couple of settings that I use to make it run smoother. I'm going to show you how to configure the settings and how to set up multiple controllers for multiplayer. So if this information is useful to you, then please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. So for this tutorial, you're going to need a Windows PC and you're going to need a USB hard drive that is formatted to NTFS. First, I'm going to show you how to install Dolphin on your Xbox Series S or X. So if you've already got it installed on your Xbox, then you can skip to the next part of this video. If you want to install Dolphin in retail mode, then you're going to need to click the link in the description down below to Gamer13's GitHub. And you're going to have to join his Discord and check to see if the apps are live or not. He does have apps for all different emulators and they all work in retail mode. And if you want to install on dev mode, then go to Sir Mangler's GitHub page. Go to the latest release, which is 1.12 as of recording this video. Make sure that green latest tag is there and that it is 1.12 or above. Scroll down and go to the bit where it says Dolphin UWP and we want this APPX, the app X. Click on that and it will download that for you. Once that's downloaded, launch your Xbox in dev mode and go to the bit where it says remote access. Remote access settings and enable Xbox device portal. Close. And what we want is the IP that's in the bottom there that says 1.92.1680. The last digits of yours will be different. Type that IP into your browser, including the HTTPS colon slash slash, and it'll bring you to the Xbox device portal. It may say that there is a security risk, but if you click advance and accept and continue, it'll bring you to this page. Click add and then click browse and find that app X that we downloaded earlier. Double click on it, click next, click start. Once that's installed, click done. And if we go back to our Xbox, you can see that Dolphin Emulator is on there. If we press the select key or the view key, whatever they call it on Xbox, and go down to view details and press A, and make sure that that UWP is a game and not an app. Now we can launch Dolphin Emulator. It may take a minute or two to open the first time, but you will be greeted with this lovely new front end that's available for Dolphin. Press the view key or the settings key. Before we, we're not gonna change anything in here. What we want to do is to go all the way over to where it says paths and folders. And we want to click the bit where it says set Dolphin user folder location. Press A and make sure your hard drive is plugged in and go down to the USB and click on your hard drive. Choose any folder you want here because this is where we're gonna house all of the settings. So I'm gonna make a new folder here called D. XBX, I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click select this folder and then I'm going to come out of the settings and I'm going to leave it for a while until these settings come off. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes just so it can create those folders on my hard drive. After a few minutes, I'm going to close Dolphin by pressing the Xbox guide button, going to where it says Dolphin emulator, pressing start and quitting. So I'm going to unplug my hard drive and plug it back into my PC, go to the folder that I made the DXBX, and now we can see all the Dolphin settings folders are in here, including in the config section, we have the Dolphin Inny and the Gamepad Inny as well. So all of these files tell Dolphin what the configuration is. So how do we change the settings for the Xbox? Well, you click a link in the description down below and you download a version of Dolphin Emulator for PC. So to download it, we click the Windows X64 version here and it will download a version of Dolphin. Make sure that you get it from the latest beta version. Don't get the latest stable version. You can get a developmental version if you want because we just want the settings, but I prefer to use the beta version. Once that's downloaded, it's going to give you a Dolphin 7-zip file. So you're going to need to install 7-zip or use an unwrap program of your choosing. I'm going to show more options, 7-zip, and then click Extract here. And that's going to give me the Dolphin X64 folder, which is a portable version of Dolphin. And if I click on Dolphin X64 and then I click Dolphin.exe, it's going to launch Dolphin. So now if we go to our documents folder, there will be a Dolphin emulator folder. If you click on that and you'll see all the same folders that are in your Xbox Dolphin emulator config. So we need to set up Dolphin on PC to run on Xbox Series S or X and then transfer those files over. So the first thing we do is we go to the config, we click enable cheats, and then I'm going to change my fallback region to NTSC-U because I use mainly American games. And then in the path section, I'm going to click add, I'm going to go to my hard drive and I'm going to go to where I store my Dolphin games, which is in this testing Xbox folder. Click select folder and then click close. I just start adding the games to this version of Dolphin. Then I'm going to open the graphics tab. Then in back end, we're going to change that to Direct 3D12. 
And then I'm gonna click start in full screen. And then in the shader compilation bit, most people will tell you to use hybrid Uber shaders and click compile shaders before starting, which is what I would normally do with Dolphin as well. But that's gonna cause a lot of stutter in the early moments of the game when you're playing the game. So when I'm testing, I use skip drawing. If I was planning to play a game for a very long time, I'd click hybrid Uber shaders and I'd put up with the stuttering at the start of the game. Because what happens is while the game is playing, it compiles all the shaders together and then it puts them in your system memory. So the more times you play the game, the less stuttering you're gonna get. But at the minute, skip drawing is the one that I've found that has worked to get the games running smoother. So it's entirely up to you there. In the enhancement section, change it from native to three times 1080p. And then in the advanced section, I'm gonna click show FPS, show VPS and show speed, just because I like to look at that stuff while I'm playing games. And I'm also gonna compare I'm also going to click load custom texture packs and prefetch custom textures because I use a lot of custom texture packs. As you're going to see, I'm going to copy all of them. I'm going to show you where to copy them if you use custom textures. And that's it for the graphics. And then finally, we're going to set up our controllers. So click the controller icon and plug in your first Xbox controller. So I'm going to set up these games for GameCube controllers because it's the easiest way of doing it. But if you want to do it for the Wiimote, you just basically do the same thing but then configure the buttons to what you want for the Nintendo Wiimote. So in port one for the GameCube controller for port one, click configure, and then where it says device, find WG input zero Xbox one game controller and click that. Zero is port one on your Xbox. Now we set up our Xbox controllers so of A, B, X, and Y. If you click on the button and then press A on your controller, as you can see, it's changed to A. I'll do the same with B, X, and Y. So now when I press A on my controller, you can see it lights up and highlights what buttons I've pressed. Z, I set that to R1, and start, I set that to LB. So RB is Z, LB is start. You can set that to the start button, but I much prefer it on LB for some reason. D-pad, we go up, down, left, right on the D-pad, and then for the control stick, this is the left analog stick, so up, just click each one, click each one. Now when I move my analog stick, you can see the dot in the center circle there, move around. And I'm just gonna adjust the dead zone because this controller is a bit old, it has a bit of drift. I'm just gonna put, click the dead zone until a little square box appears. And then when I let go of my controller and it lands in that box, that will be my dead zone. The C stick, I use the right analog stick, just change it to up, down, left, right on the analog stick. I'll do the same with the dead zone for this one. And then for the triggers, this is the important bit because GameCube has analog triggers. L is the left trigger, R is the right trigger, and where it says L-analog, press L. And then where it says R-analog, press the right trigger in. So now when we press the right trigger in just a little bit and squeeze it, like we would in Super Mario Sunshine, just to squirt a bit of water out as we run, and then a full press down, make sure that that full press down works as well. So just test your triggers out there. For the rumble, the bit where it says motor, click on that, click motor L, press select, go to operators, press R, motor R, press select, press test, test it, your, rum your controller should rumble, mine just did, click OK, and that's controller 1 set up for controller 2, plug in your next Xbox controller into your PC, click standard controller in port 2, click configure, and then in the device you want WG input one, and you've probably guessed it, for controller number three, you need w in, WG input number two, and for controller number four, you need WG input number three. I'm not gonna show you how to do all this again, I'm just gonna set it up. But do the exact same thing again, but with this controller. Close that when it's done, and then for Nintendo Wii controllers, you use the exact same principle. Make sure it says emulated Wii remote, click configure, and you want WG input zero, if you want to know how to set up the controllers for specific games, I'll leave links in the description to the tutorials that I've made about Nintendo Wii controller configuration. But whatever I do in those videos, instead of using X input, use WG input 0 or 1, depending on the controller that you're using. So once you're done, click close. And now we're going to be looking at the games themselves and some of the cheats that we can use. So let's right click on the game that we're going to cheat for. So I'm going to use Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I'm going to put in the Hyrule Speed Hack because that's an important hack. I'm going to go to Patches. I'm going to click the Hyrule Speed Hack on. And I'm also going to go to the AR codes and choose whatever action replay codes that I want to use. You can try and download Gecko codes. 
if you want, but some games don't have them, some games do. So this one had some gecko codes, so you can use them and they tell you exactly what they do on the tin. Uh, and I'm just gonna put infinite health on. And you can also add your own codes, which add things to 60 FPS and 16 by nine. I've done plenty of videos of that on my channel. So if you want widescreen hacks, you can add them here as well. So we're also going to go to properties. We're gonna to go to get AR codes, and then we're gonna to go to everything unlocked on Mario Kart Double Dash. So I can play, start playing with everything unlocked. Go to your documents folder, find that Dolphin emulator folder, double click on that, and then go to your hard drive, go to where it says, go to the folder we set up earlier. As you can see, they are exactly the same. We want the one from the documents folder. We want to just drag that into here and replace all the files that are in this destination. Also, I have all of my games here as well. And then finally, the texture packs. Where do I put these texture packs? So if I go onto the hard drive again and find the folder that I made before, the DXBX one, click load, go to textures, and then my texture packs that I have lovingly set up in this folder here, I'm just gonna drag and drop all those textures into there. And now all my HD texture packs are in there as well. If you wanna know where to get texture packs, I'll leave a link in the description down below to a video showing you how to install the texture packs. And I'll leave a link to the forum where all the texture packs are found. We're almost done and we're almost ready to go over to our Xbox. We just have one final thing just to make sure that the games run a little bit smoother. We right click on the hard drive itself, go to this PC, right click on the hard drive itself, go to properties, and then go to security, go to advanced, click add, click select a principle, click advanced, click find now, and you want to find all, applica all application packages. Double click on it, click okay, give it full control, Click OK, and then click Replace All Child Object Permission Entries with Inheritable Permissions Entries from this object. Click Apply, click Yes, and it's gonna come up with a bunch of errors, but just keep clicking Continue through it. And once that's done, click OK, OK, and now we're ready to eject our hard drive from our PC and move back over to our Xbox. So plug in your hard drive and make sure that if it comes up and asks you if you want an Xbox hard drive or a media storage hard drive that you click media storage and launch Dolphin using your player one controller. Then go to the settings again and we can add our game. So if we go to paths and folders, you can add a path, find the folder on your hard drive. So mine is testing Xbox. This is the folder with them all in. I'm gonna click select folder and I'll wait a couple of seconds to get access to my controller back. I got access to my controller. So now all my games are here. Now I'm gonna choose game and test out to see if the multiplayer is working. I'm gonna use my Super Mario 64 custom ROM. Okay, so there we go, moment of truth. Custom texture packs are all filed in. As you can see, the menu screen is completely different as Super Mario. And now we press A and we go into the game and Mario and Luigi are running around. I'm using both controllers, beautiful. Camera could do with a bit of extra work. I can't play it as two players at once, but here's Mario. And here is Luigi. And if you want to know how to make this Super Mario 64 mod so you can play multiplayer with your friends on your Xbox Series S, then leave a comment in the description down below and I'll let you know how to do it. But there we have it. Mario's running around, Luigi's running around the multiplayer. Super Mario 64 running on the Xbox Series S and X. So I can already see that the mirror mode has been unlocked and the 150cc has been unlocked and we've got all of the characters unlocked as well. And there are all of the trophies. This game really released with just four cups. I've got both my controllers here. I can't play with two controllers at the same time, or can I? Yep. And oh, that's a challenge. Can I play? Can I win? No, I can't do it. It's impossible. Both controllers are working. First controller. Second controller is working at the bottom there. There's Wario and Waluigi moving around. 
that's it that's how you set up dolphin emulator to run on xbox series s and x with multiplayer now i just need to find some friends to play the games with don't do anything i wouldn't do